pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you that you have given us another opportunity to hear your word. I pray that Lord is going to use me, that I may speak your words to us or in good myself, that your word will have an effect and power in our hearts. And also, Lord, we will be invited by you. It is through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. We see you. What has happened? Hallelujah. Amen. I want to take this opportunity and also want to thank uh, the Reverend Andrew for inviting me to come and preach in his church. I've never preached here before, but I remember I visited once. Sometimes I thought I've never visited, but I remember I visited since you the completion of the church. And I want to say thank you for him for inviting me to come here. He has been invited. He has been inviting me for some time, but I have never been available. But uh, during this this time, I just not available and thank you for that. Also, I want to thank you for the good welcome that I got from uh, my readers that are there. I want to thank you so much for your warm welcome this morning. Uh, my name is Yuramhar. Is a major reverend. So, my money and I love the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal savior. He's a good God in my heart. I serve in the military, in defense, I currently in a new key, and uh, that is where we are. And I, I feel good to be there. It is good to be in the military, killing people. It's good. <laughs> anyway, I'm not a killer, uh, but uh, in the task, I have to. Go about it, then there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, we visit many places, we visit in Somali for quite some time now. So, issues of war and other things, we are used to them. And thank you so much for your um, prayers for us. I pray, I know you pray for us. I also know you have for uh, a little bit of around here. And thank you so much for that. Be praying for us. Especially for those who are uh, the operations in Somalia and other places like hostile places like Congo and uh, Southern Sudan, Northern Kenya. We need a lot of prayers. Uh, listen to you have a lot of our police, what happened to our police in uh, Saburu and other places, Trokana. So continue praying for us as we build security in this country. And my soldiers are happy because they know you pray for us. Now, because about when you are an attack or move of a dish, one as a few sir. Yes, when you are an attack or move of a dish, one as a few. We are proud of that. We are proud about that. However, it's me, we don't know about it, but I know the move of a dish. Now, I uh, just want to recognize our deputy governor from Rana out here. So, just feel much welcome. Thank you for that. Now, um, we are going to hear the word of God, and uh, the title of my sermon this morning is The Power of Repentance. The Power of Repentance. And some people may be asking us, ah, I've repenting, I've been repenting every day, so even when I came to the church, I repented. But sometimes I ask myself, do you even know what the word repentance means? Do you really know about it? And does our repentance touch God? I don't know. Maybe you are going to hear about it and to learn more about repentance. I hear the heart of the Bible this evening. And I was telling you to God, maybe I'm just starting the revival. It will just be a continuous. Because the revival is just much about more about repentance and knowing God and getting in Christ with God and for those who are saved to just to stand more firm in the world. And uh, repentance is to turn away or to turn toward Christ. The word literally means is to perceive afterwards. It means to change one's mind and for purpose for the better. Repentance is just, it's not just mere guilt, as some people may think. But sometimes uh, guilt motivates repentance. Repentance is not also, it's not just remorse. Sometimes some people feel remorseful. But repentance is to return to the Lord. Returning to the Lord. It's an aspect whereby you have to completely make a U-turn 
and return to the Lord. You know, we all get lost. Because the Lord is still in his position. He does not change. He's still in his seat. But for us, because of sinful world and sinful nature, we somehow get away from God. Therefore, repentance is a, a return to the Lord. It's a decision to forsake sin and pursue righteousness. You know, you make a decision. You decide. Not just be a revival and say, oh, I've repented. But have that something, have that thing sunk in your mind or deep in your heart. If you have not sat there, then it's not repentance. It's just a mere verbal talk. And most of us does that. And I know even when you came to the church, you sat down, God forgive me, and just like that. But it's not real repentance. Repentance is the change in direction. If you are going to this direction, you change. And you have to change that direction. And go to the direction where God is. It is a change of mind or ways of thinking. A change of mind. That, that means there, is, there must be some mindset. And you have to change for the sake of the Lord. Repentance is turning to God. You know, the Greek word of repentance is metanoia. That means to have a different way of thinking. Meta means change, and noia means mind. And therefore, to think the way you have been living is to change your mindset. It happens when you start thinking in God's way. The interesting thing is, the closer you get to God, the more clearly you see your sins, and the more you repent. The more you understand how God good, how, how, how good God is, the more you realize how bad you are. You know, the more we get to God, the more we start realizing of how bad we are, and we start making a decision of change in our hearts. You know, some people don't like this kind of sermon. I know it's not the kind of a sermon that most people run in the church. You like the kind of a sermon that tell you, God will bless you. God will give you mansions. You will fly in the airport. You know, you, you like that. That's kind of someone that most Christians love. But the fact is, those, some of those sermons will just end here in the world. But this one will take you, will make you fly and go to heaven. And you're able to meet your dear God. Not now, because I don't want to send you now. But when the time comes, you'll be with the Lord. One as if you are sad. Because all these material things will leave them in this world. All the powers will leave them in this world. I've never seen somebody buried with material things of this world. I hear sometimes another person was telling me, even these days in Mochel, if you're not very careful, they remove you. Sometimes you may feel like in that suit that you have buried with that particular person is there. Justify there are no shoes, there are no things. When we work around our bed and ask. Some places they do like that. Because they ask, how can I bury somebody with this shoe of 5,070 shoes? No, what I do was okay, but what was what I do have to work when I had a nurse. Because they don't have those things. They cannot accept how Vido Tazika is a bit. And that's what you know that. There is nobody who will be buried with all these things we are looking for. And every time in the world, these material things will never be buried with them. And even if you are buried with them, they are going to rot. The clothing, the what? They will rot. And therefore, the best thing is to ask yourself that thing that will never rot. Can you check on it? Because it's the most important thing in life. All of us will work very hard because of our children. Very hard. But these days I'm seeing children killing their parents because of their own work, because of the world that their parents have made. They're asking why they not to care is a little. They cheat you. We have seen of a big family, I remember one of the big families I've not want to mention, but maybe you saw it some times earlier. Because that person come from my press, rural area. And I remember him. This big person during the era of Kani. Akifugiwa kwa nyumba. Kwa sababu ya maranyaki. Unafugiwa. Yani watu wanakunya. Unafugiwa kwa nyumba. Yani watu wanakawana maranyaki. Nani yako unafugiwa. You know, mimi kama wakinafugia. Nigeaza tumuwa wa mungu na kwa mungu wa santa. 
I always want to prepare my soul to come to you. <laughs> because that's the time you understand. All this world means nothing. During Corona time, you understood how things went. And many people suffered. I know there are victims in this church and many other places. We lost people, very close people. I also lost very close relatives. But I remember sometimes when people are sick, I don't know whether you're a victim or that. And you are there in ICU, there in the world. Nobody could visit you. It's only God that could visit you. Even your closest people, your wife, your children, your husband, they could be your friends. Even the vicar or the bishop could not visit you. I wish that time you could understand what it really means to be close to God. One of my friends told me, uh, he was a pastor, and he met someone in a prayer center and he was telling me, oh, he was sick. And it was that it was a victim of corona virus. And uh, it was in ICU and all that for three months. And he told me, Leverett, do you know one thing? I repented everything I knew. And that I did not know. Because I knew very well. I repented everything. One time I had an accident. Just me, some few years ago, around here, I had an accident. And I remember that time, I, 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 I've never forgotten that time. Because I had carried some, some of my church members, and some of them were not saved. But I remember when, before Sasa Gari Itan, it go away Katan, Kavatan. And I remember one of my one of men that were in that vehicle praying. He's the kind of guy I could preach every day and tell him to get saved and to say, wherever they are to go. But he interceded for us. Even though I was not able to pray. But for him, I could hear him pray. And after that, and after that, after that, after that, after that I told can you really pray the way you are praying that time? And he says, then I don't need to do a Sasa, if it happened, I'm going to teach. But it is always very important to ask us. Sometimes when, when we, are, we are having some, some of these things, we ask ourselves. We, 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 re, we are able to connect with God when situations become very difficult. I always ask myself, can we connect with God even when situations are not difficult? So that when the situations become difficult for us, God can be there within us. You don't need to struggle looking for God. Because he's there with you. Because at times comes when you're not even able to pray. But is God allowed you? Thomas, Watson, Thomas, someone called Thomas Watson said, "A grace uh, uh, defined repentance as a grace of God whereby a person is inwardly humbled, inwardly humbled." And visibly transformed. We can see the transformation within you. When we accept Christ as our personal Savior, it's an initial repentance that saves us from the eternal penalty of sin. But as we grow in walk with Him, repentance should become part of our daily prayer life and communion with God. As in the text that we have read here in the book of Luke, chapter 13, verse 1 4, Jesus gives a powerful repentance. It's not just for the super sinful. Repentance is purely a change of mindset. You know, sometimes you look at the, some people and you look, those people should repent. But we don't ask ourselves, are we valid to repent? You know, repentance is purely a change of mindset. You have to change your mindset. You know, God gives us a space to think, to make decisions. God does not force you to do something. No. It just gives you time. And in the text that we have read in the book of Luke chapter 13, verse 1 to 9, the Bible talks of some people who are at the time who told Jesus about Galileans. They told Jesus about Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. And I, I know, sometimes do you, Jesus was asked, do you suppose that these Galileans were worse sinners than all of other Galileans? You know, Jesus mentioned another, another disaster, and he was telling them, that uh, uh, there were those 18 who the tower of Siloam fell on them and killed them. And it's like, do you think that even these people that died, they died because of sinners, more sinners than other people? No. If this church falls down 
and we turn. Probably by this disaster or calamity, may God forbid it not happen. If it falls down, you hear people saying that. I, I kept on telling you, those people from the world, they are devil worshippers. And you know, we, there are so many theories about people talking about us. Even that in Chugaji, we are not going to be able to do it. We are going to be able to do it. You know, we have all the theories. And when bad things happen to people, we, we, we form theories. The other day I was listening to another woman. They have circumstances that have happened around her home. And everybody started talk, saying that a, she is a witch. She has bewitched her children. And this woman, because of all those statements, has now gotten high blood pressure and, uh, and the sugar I better do, kila kitu inyeza mkorogana, because of all those mentalities and hearing those things coming from the people. The way people think when things, something bad things happen, we start, we start having our own theories. Those theories that we pick, we forget to look at ourselves and ask ourselves, how is our relationship with God? Jesus was telling these people, before you point about those Herodians, or those people, I think maybe probably Jesus was a witness or maybe heard about that story, about the slum, those towers around of Pharaoh and ten people in the day. Before you started victimizing those people, just know that even you yourself, you need to repent. It's a situation whereby you have to search your mind, you have to search your soul, you have to search yourself and ask, what is my relationship between me and God? And Jesus gave them a parable. And this parable, when we look at uh, the same place, Jesus gives a parable of somebody who had a fig tree. And for three years, this gardener, uh, this man who had a fig tree, went there and had, because he owned this fig tree. For three years, it produced nothing. And he said, can you cut this tree because it is not producing any fruit? And the gardener said, I ask for more one more year that I may manure it and fertilize it and I see whether it's going to, to bring out fruit. If it doesn't bring, then we cut it off. One more year. And I know there are people here that are sitting down, they are in that verge of one more year. God is just waiting for you to repent. One more year. One more time. God is giving you an opportunity. One more time. When I was getting saved, I was in form two. And I sat down under a mango tree. And I asked myself, so many people have been preaching to me and get saved. So there's nothing new I'm going to get from all the people that have been preaching to me. I have had the message. I asked myself, well, how long will I keep rejecting this message? And at that particular time, I said, I have accepted you, Jesus, as, your person, as my personal Savior. And after that, it was on a Sunday that those people that had God, Christian leader, had gone and when they came back in the evening and told them, pray for me. Let me tell you, there are so many things that will happen in our lives when we repent. Let us not get in the verge of one more year. Because sometimes some people may be in that grace period of one more year. You know, Jesus in, his, in the masses, God in his seat there, Jesus is interceding for you one more year. Give this man one more year. Give this woman one more year. Let us see that he is going to change. One more. Jesus is interceding for you. And you know that you are being interceded for because you have rejected to change. There's that kind of life you feel that you're very comfortable of that you don't want to change. We are all sinners saved by the grace of God. And therefore, repentance is a continual feeling that we should keep checking our hearts and our minds to know ourselves of about our relationship with God. How is it? How are we? How are we marching with God? Are we doing the right thing or the wrong thing? And are we connected with God? Now, may I ask myself, what happens when we repent? One of the things I'm talking about 
knowledge, dependence is required for eternal lives. You will never see heaven until you repent. And the Bible is saying, not all those people who call, who say, who call me Lord, Lord, that they are going to enter the kingdom of heaven. Because there are so many people that God saved and they relaxed. And the enemy had been visiting them now and then. And the time will come. And they'd be engulfed in that kind of a situation. And they'd go to hell. Brothers and sisters, I know this is not the kind of messages that people love so much when they are told to repent. But it might be, I hear that it's a revival. The same thing that will happen in the revival of dead people. I know people, some of you will not come to the revival. Because you feel that it's a wastage of time. Ah, so this is a wastage of time. I better relax. You know, this Sunday I have to relax. But let me tell you, when situation comes to you, you look for this day and you never find him. You know, there are times when situation comes, you look for even the, even the number for the bishop, you cannot find it. And it's there in your phone. That's the time you know you needed to repent and you never repented. You need to repent for you to get eternal life. No must ten must. No must leave ten to uh, leave twenty three. There is no one righteous, not even one. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And for the wages of sin is death. That is Romans six twenty three. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ our Lord. The other thing is repentance produces deliverance. I know there are people, and we have read in the in the book of First Corinthians, chapter uh, First Corinthians. We have read about it, uh, First Corinthians chapter ten, about the Israelites and how God used to deliver them. Sometimes they could get to situations whereby they were living in a sinful time, a sinful period. They could repent, and after repenting, God would bring deliverance to their life. There are things that will never happen to your life. There are people that now are victim of the enemy. The enemy have captured you. The enemy have captured your family. The enemy have captured your situations of life, your business. The enemy have taken captive of you because you have refused to repent. And do you know some of the things that we have? Even for those people that we call for deliverance and we come for deliverance, after deliverance, you tell them, probably because they are not themselves, after deliverance, you tell them, repent, come to the Lord, accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Because we know very well, if they get out of that situation that way, they still go back to the same situation. You know, there are things in your life that if you need God's deliverance, then you need repentance. There are things that you need to repent on behalf of your family. On behalf of your children. Because maybe probably the way their children are, they are not making you happy. You depend on their behalf for them to be delivered. On their behalf for them to be delivered. And deliverance will still come when repentance is there. When people repent, deliverance comes in. Repentance produces physical healing. There are some sicknesses we always be healed by God when we repent. And the situations that comes, I know of a woman who was, who was not getting children for many years. And they kept praying and praying and praying and nothing was happening. And one time the husband, I think the Holy Spirit talked to him and he could remember how he terrorized many ladies before he got married. And he went repenting. Talking to them, asking for forgiveness. That year, the wife was and we got a child. There are some situations that you get locked to you. They just get locked. There are some things that you never, some sicknesses of the heart, of the mind, physical sicknesses that you never get healed. If you are a victim of sin and you don't repent, sometimes you need to repent for God to intervene in that situation that needs healing in your life. Repentance can save your family from destruction. And that is why I'm saying, parents, let us pray, let us repent on behalf of our children. They are in universities, they are in colleges, 
they are married with us. But some of those people, they, because of the way they, they, they are brought up, they don't see the necessity of repentance. But when we repent on their behalf, God, you have mercy and you forgive them. And therefore, you remember Jonah, after talking to the people of Dinan, and the people of Nineveh accepted the message of repentance, and they repented, and God saved them. Now, what am I saying to you? When you repent, your family will be saved from destruction by the enemy. When you find things are not happening the way you want, sit down and repent. Repent on behalf of your husband. Some, somehow lives the kind of life you want to live. Repent on behalf of your wife. Repent on behalf of your children. Repent on behalf of them. And you find some things, so many things changing. And God saving your family from destruction. Repentance will transform you. It will transform you from the whom you are to another new person. You have transformation. Paul was transformed. He wasn't even changed the name from Saul to Paul. The persecutor of the church to someone now that is able to stand in the church. And we are reading so many epistles written by him. Therefore, what I'm trying to say here is there's a transformation that comes when we repent. And suppose, I know there are people who have marriage issues. You are suffering one way or the other. Can you just sit down, repent, and ask God for forgiveness? Maybe of things that you know and are known to you. And you find God intervening in the situation. What does this say? There's a breakthrough that comes when we repent. And we are able to connect straight with God. We are able, God is able to hear our prayers. There's that divine connection with God when we repent. When we learn to repent, we are able to connect with that God. Repentance will unlock the doors of forgiveness and other doors of blessing that are shut. Sometimes God shuts the doors for us. Because of what you are praying and you cannot hear. Because of the kind of life that you are living. And he wants you to repent so that he can connect with you. Brothers and sisters, can we repent so that the Lord will have a time so that he can open the rocked doors and even the enemy can lock our doors for us. You find things are not happening. In your family, in your business, in your life, in your career, there's no progression. But when we repent, you are able to connect with God in his mercy seat. And God is able to transform you. And there will be all doors be getting opened by you. Because Jesus died on the cross for us. And therefore, we are able to have an access to him when we pray and we seek him. Therefore, what I try to mean here is, when you pray, you are able to connect with God. Don't need the vision, don't need me. You are able to connect with God yourself. But the only part is sin. But when you repent, you connect with God. And lastly, repentance clears away guilt and shame and gives us the peace of mind. I know there are people who are guilty of some, some things that happened earlier in their life. They don't know what to do. Just repent and ask the Lord to move those guilt and shame so that you may, move, you, may, you, you may live a life of freedom and a life of peace and you find God. Therefore, brothers and sisters, there is power in repentance. God is not a respecter of any man. In fact, he finished all the children of Israel, as told in the book of 1 Corinthians 10, verse 1 to 5, as a result of their sinful nature and rebellion unto him. And therefore, it's not, it does not matter if you are alone in the church or in ministry or who, you, or who you are in the society or who values you. No. The fact is, the fact of the matter is, all of us must repent and none is good. The Lord says, if my people who are called by name, my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. That's the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. Therefore, repentance is a turning to the Lord. He is merciful to those who turn to him and for comfort and strength. And therefore, I want to tell you, if you, if you just turn back to the Lord, all of us will be forgiven. And therefore, let us repent. Uh, and our lives will never be the same again. I want to give you these two minutes. You just go before God. And 
ask God. Maybe there might be something that is hidden in you and is connecting you with God. And as I was, I was preaching here, you could hear, you could hear in your heart, ah, let me speak it about me. Ah, that is why my daughters don't get married. That is why my home have a problem. You, 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 you can hear the Spirit talking to you. Can you go before God and ask God forgive me? God forgive me. Genuinely forgive me. You, you just go there and go before God and ask God remember me. Forgive me my sins. And I repent everything I've done. That thing that you know you've never repented and it's just there. Repent. Don't keep it and just think that God forget forgot about it. No. Repent. And the Lord will come to you and will minister to your life. And for those who like to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, it's still an opportunity to you to accept Jesus Christ. But first of all, go before God.